Welcome to Ultima Citrix update on what's new in the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops 1903 current release. As we expect in this current release cycle, all the major components in the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop solution have been refreshed. These components were released on the 28th of March, so for those of you with current support, you should be able to access these um, components in your citrix.com download section now. We're going to take a quick run through the key highlights from this release, um, just to identify areas that we think that you may be able to gain some additional value. So first off, we're looking at server core. So now we're in a position where the delivery controller components and director can now be installed and are supported, more importantly, on the server core platform. So for those of you that aren't aware, server core is Microsoft's server offering, um, which doesn't include UI components. So typically have a different management approach. So being able to deliver um, our core infrastructure components from a server core platform gives us a minimal server footprint, reducing the attack surface area, which is quite important for some organizations. Also gives us some optimizations in terms of um, the performance footprint of these servers. So it also aligns with Microsoft strategy, which um, seems to be going more in the direction of removing UI based components from uh, from the server platforms um, with the UI only being a, being available in the um, long term um, in the long term service release of the server platforms um, so being able to adopt server core could be um, could be a benefit to some of you who are looking to adopt some newer releases of the um, server operating systems Taking a look at the VDA, um, probably the most notable enhancement in 1903 is the fact that MCSIO um, is actually back. Um, so some of you may have noticed in more recent releases, the um, position from Citrix in terms of MCSIO has um, uh, backed off somewhat in terms of in the last release, so in 1811, um, MCSIO actually wasn't installed by default um, and wasn't offered as an enabled component um, out of the box and um, so you'd specifically have to tell it to install now this was down to some um, stability issues some customers um, may have experienced um, so what's basically happened is that MCS now leverages effectively a similar mechanism that Citrix utilize in Citrix provisioning services now this gives us some direct benefits in terms of one of the main differences that you'll notice is with MCSIO and for those of you that don't know MCSIO is a storage optimization process so what we have the ability to do is use um, uh, for those of you who are familiar with provisioning services provisioning services has a mechanism called cache and RAM and overflow to disk so this is where whenever the operating system needs to perform any write operations which tend to be the most expensive from a storage platform perspective um, the OS can actually commit these into a uh, staging location effectively which is stored in RAM so if you think about in terms of transaction speed how fast uh, the OS is able to send writes into physical memory obviously that's potentially significantly faster than you're able to commit transactions to a physical storage device so what we tend to see is that when we're using a um, RAM cache to deliver um, a, a writable location for the OS to use, we see significantly improved um, OS performance and also user experience. Now, obviously RAM's quite expensive, so we can't afford to be giving kind of 10, 20, 30 gigabytes of RAM to use as cache. So what we need to do is actually back that up with some volume. Now this is where the overflow to disk comes in. So we can use the RAM cache for a temporary staging area, but then effectively start to stage out blocks from RAM to a physical storage device. Now, with MCS previously, the way this was done was that uh, uninitialized, unformatted disk was attached to each virtual machine. Now, from an administrator or user perspective, this device wasn't usable in any way, shape or form. It was purely used for the storage optimization process. Now, with the new mechanism, uh, we gain some of the benefits that people using provisioning services have had for several years now. Instead of having an uninitialized and unformatted disk, MCS now uses file-based caching. So rather than using an actual storage device, what we have attached to the virtual machine is a live formatted um, NTFS partition disk um, that is attached and usable 
within the VM. Um, within this disk, we'll have um, a, a VHD file, effectively, so a VHDX file. Now, it's that VHDX file that MCS is then using to, um, to stage the writes into. So that VHDX file then becomes the actual cache that MCS is using. Now, the reason why this is quite a good thing is that one of the things that people using provisioning services have been able to do for some time is actually utilize their cache disk to provide some persistent storage. Now, things that may benefit from this would be for things like maintaining a persistent event logs. If you've got any log files that you need to persist um, or kind of antivirus DAT files, anything that you want to perhaps keep during the life cycle of that VM, um, where otherwise you have a non-persistent VM, um, you have the ability now to be able to redirect those components to this cache disk. Now, that cache disk is persistent um, in on-premises deployments. One of the things where I'd urge some caution is just around Azure at the moment. So, because the cost profile of storage is different in Azure than in an on-premises deployment, where obviously you're having to pay a certain amount for the amount of storage that you're using, out of the box, um, in Azure, the right cache disks are not persistent. So as and when a virtual machine is shut down, their cache disk will be removed. So at the moment in Azure, out of the box, redirecting things to your cache disk isn't necessarily a viable approach. Now, you can override that behavior. It's not necessarily the most straightforward of processes to do it. It involves um, utilizing some PowerShell. It can only be done at the creation of um, your machine catalog when you're deploying devices. Um, so it's just something to be aware of the fact that on premises, if you're doing this on kind of Hyper-V, VMware, Zen server, um, this stuff will just work. In Azure, you maybe have to do a little bit more planning just to make sure it's going to work as expected. Um, but like I say, you can define the behavior that you want. Um, it's just that you may need to do a little bit more work up front to actually get it going. Now, there are also some performance benefits. So using this new mechanism, um, there are going to be some enhancements in terms of IO performance as well. Um, so this is really good capability that's being added to the VDA. So this has been kind of in the works for quite a long time. Um, so it's going to be really exciting to kind of see um, see the kind of real differences this is going to make for some customers. Um, so I should also mention that at the moment, this functionality isn't available for workloads that are going to be deployed into AWS or uh, GCP. So in terms of cloud providers at the moment, Azure is the only one that's actually going to be supported um, for MCSIO. Um, AWS and GCP, I'd expect to be coming in a future release, um, but you'll have to keep your eyes open for that one. So at the moment, it's on premises and Azure only. Um, AWS and GCP are to be confirmed. Looking at other components that have received some enhancements, Direct has had some improvements. So a lot of the things they're integrating into Director is the ability to provide additional support insights. So one of the common areas where people will utilize Director will be to understand log on performance. So one of the new capabilities they've added is the ability to drill further into profile load times. Um, so you'll have the ability through Director to be able to see um, not only people's profile sizes, um, the number of files in there, and also a breakdown of um, where within their profile those files are stored so you can identify any problem areas without having to go into things like tree size pro to be able to break down kind of exactly where things are um, within the user profile that are causing problems um, so that's a nice enhancement that should give people some nice extra visibility into things that are potentially going to impact their log on times other changes that we have in vdas um, so within the Windows VDA, we've got some additional Windows Ink support for Surface and Surface Pro Pen devices. So this is something that Microsoft, um, Microsoft and Citrix have been closely working on to make sure that Citrix have the ability to leverage the native APIs to be able to deliver as near native um, capabilities as is technically possible um, for users that are working on Surface Pro devices. So um, there should be a much improved user experience with the 1903 release than users may have experienced with previous versions. So that's going to be something that's interesting to have a look at. 
Um, copying pasting files from a session to a local device. This has been a big customer ask. Um, so this is a combination um, functionality. So as well as a 1903 virtual desktop agent on the server, um, on the server platform, you also require the workspace app version 1902 on the client side to be able to support this. So just in terms of what this actually adds, it's the ability to natively copy and paste files between a remote session and the local device, which previously hasn't been available. So that's a new add to the 1903 release. One of the other things that may affect some customers is um, as of 1903, um, so Framehawk has previous, previously been um, deprecated. Um, it's now no longer available as of the 1903 release. So Framehawk was the protocol that Citrix acquired, which the fundamentals of which have um, been developed into what is now adaptive transport. So this is the HDX over UDP that can add some um, significant user experience benefits when people are on kind of more variable WAN connections or perhaps connecting over um, uh, connecting over mobile telephony. Um, so as of the 1903 releases, the Framehawk protocol is no longer available. So the guidance is to look to transition their users that are using Framehawk onto using adaptive transport. So the UDP based HDX protocol. So some people may be happy about this, others may be sad, but so in storefront, classic user experience has now been removed as of the current release. So this is the green bubbles theme that um, was available as part of the earlier storefront releases. This is now no longer available in the current release. So people will have to look to transition to um, the new um, customizable themes, which were available as part of storefront. Now, session recording, session recording, there's been some interesting changes. Um, so we've now got the ability to configure event logging policies for file activities from the policy console. So session recording has the ability to be able to modify, um, identify when files in a particular defined location are modified, written to or deleted. Now, um, previously, this was something which had to be configured in the registry on the VDA. Um, this is now something that can be configured in the uh, policy console for session recording. Um, so that adds some nice flexibility to that configuration. We also, for the purpose of event logging policies, have the ability to integrate with Citrix Cloud, uh, which was something that was missing previously. So if you want the ability to be able to um, trigger session recording based on particular application launch activities, then this is now supported when you're using Citrix Cloud as your delivery platform. We also in session recording have the ability to record web activities as well, which is quite a useful one. Um, so this is alongside the session recording, being able to particularly flag um, events where users have performed particular activities. So in this instance, it will capture the page titles of sites they've been um, accessing. So you can highlight particular areas of, of your recording where particular websites have been accessed, which is quite a useful feature. So that's all we have for the 1903 release. Hopefully that's been useful to you. Um, if you have any questions or you'd like to talk in more depth about any of the new capabilities, please get in contact with your account manager and we'd be happy to um, happy to talk further on this. Thank you.